How you doing, Katie? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, Terrell. Thank you. All right. Um, first and foremost, good luck this weekend. And I have a question from a chat. We're on a live stream right now. So this is from Unrivaled Boxing Talking News. He says, ask Katie if she's worked on any physical strength more in this camp as a tactic to deal with Delphine's physical aggression. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, um, I've been over in Connecticut since January training for originally the, Man the Amanda Serrano fight. Um, obviously, that fell through. So it has, been, it has been a very, very long camp. But it, um, it was a great opportunity for me to actually build um, and to improve on a few things. And one of those things was actually, I, f I definitely feel like I've gotten a lot stronger over these last few months. Um, um, that's one of the things I definitely have worked on and, and improved on. So um, hopefully that will, will come true on Saturday night. Um, final question. What can you do um, in this rematch to make sure that not only are you an undisputed champion, but make sure that you can win this fight undisputed and make sure you leave no shadow of a doubt that um, you can beat her now and even if there is a third fight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel um, I definitely um, the, the last fight was obviously very, very exciting, but probably a bit too exciting for my liking. Um, I, I want to um, clear any doubts on Saturday night and um, I definitely have to be a bit smarter and I'll probably be a bit, bit more disciplined, as I said before, but um, I have prepared for this kind of fight. I've been training hard over these last few months and um, I, I'm, I'm very, very excited about the fight. All right. Thank you. Good luck on um, Saturday. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you, Terrell. Okay, we'll throw it to Jake Donovan next. There we go. Hey, Katie. Um, I just Hi. want to I have one question for you. Um, one thing that kind of gets lost, is, you know, with your legacy, you've done so many firsts. You're actually the first female to uh, ensure that there's always full random drug testing for every single fight that you do. How important has it been for you to make sure that, like, no matter who fights you, they have to be prepared to stick a needle in their arm in order to step team in the ring? Yeah, I think that's very, very important. Um, I think just for, for boxing as a whole, it is so important to, um, to have that in place. Um, boxing is a tough enough sport, and if, if a boxer is... Um, uh, taking performance and has some drugs step into the ring. I, I, I always feel like that that is disgraceful, really, because you have to, the potential to really hurt your opponent, regardless of whether you're on drugs or not. So, um, you know, it is very, very important to have that place for every single fight, um, especially the top fights when uh, actually, uh, you're, you're fighting against, there's champion against champion uh, a lot of times. So, um, it, is, it is very important to have that place. Okay, great. That was my only question. I'll let everyone else get concerned. Thank you so much, Katie. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, great. I'll, I'll throw it to Danny Flexen next. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? Yeah, hey, Danny. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, you talked <laughs> earlier the uh, Amanda Serrano fight was originally the scheduled clash and got replaced by Delphine Pursun. Which one would you say is the more high-profile clash and which is the tougher challenge? Um, I probably would say that the Amanda Serrano fight was probably the, the bigger profile match, but Persona is probably the harder fight of the two of them. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, regardless, both both girls are, are great are great fighters, and I was prepared for a tough fight uh, for either one. But um, yeah, obviously, uh, when the, the Serrano fight uh, fell through, I was delighted to see that that Persona that Persona fight was available and. As I said before, I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible, and um, this is why I'm in this four four. And, um, and these are these are fights that that I was born for. So I, I just can't wait for for another big fight, and I do a fantastic performance. And talking of being in the biggest fights possible, which is of course a laudable objective, we've just seen Cecilia Breakers fall to Jessica McCaskill. Um, we saw Terry Harper struggle with Natasha Jonas. That looks like a rematch almost certainly with unfinished business there. Beyond Pursun, and I know you don't want to look too far past that fight, where do you see the big fights for you coming in the next one to two years with those guys kind of otherwise engaged? Um, I think there's always, there's, there's huge fights out there for um, uh, for all of us. I think that's why in and around the lightweight division, there, there's, uh, there's quality girl after quality girl. So, um, there's a lot of great fights avail available for me, but as just, as I said, I, I'm just focused purely on Saturday night. We can talk about uh, the future after uh, after Saturday, but there's huge, huge fights out there available for me. 
Best of luck on Saturday night, Katie. Thank you. I want to say. Uh, and now I'll throw to Keith Idek from Boxing Scene. Uh, hi, Katie. I was just wondering what you specifically thought of the fight between McCaskill and Brakus, and who did you think won? Um, I didn't watch the fight, uh, to be honest, but um, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously Jessica was was the underdog going into the fight. Um, I I did originally think that Cecilia might uh, might outbox her, but um, I, I'm not I'm not really hugely surprised that Jessica beat her. Um, I think Jessica's obviously a, a great fighter. She has the potential to um to her Daniel Marcon, and she has a big punch, and that's why she was able to step up in that that weight division and and cause problems. So, um. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a great performance, I'm sure, from Jessica. And uh, she's now the undisputed welterweight champion. So, you know, congratulations to her. I know you don't want to look ahead, Katie, but uh, by Brakus losing, it obviously took a, a great option off the table for you and what could have been the biggest fight in women's boxing history, maybe. I, I know you could fight McCaskill also, but can you speak to the Brakus fight just not being available to you in the future, in the immediate future anyway? Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, um, regardless of if break, breakouts is there or not, I, I, there's huge fights out there available for me, so I'm not really, uh, I haven't really talked too much about it, to be honest, um, um, you know, I don't really care who, who I fight, I just want to be, as I said, I just want to be involved in the biggest fights, I want to um, uh, create a great legacy, and I want to uh, fight uh, great champions, and I, I want to just continue to, to bring home them. Um, Bring home the belts and uh, be involved in the biggest fights possible. Katie, what do you think was a fair score of your first fight against Pursun? Uh, I, I actually didn't score the fight, but um, obviously a lot of people had me winning, a lot of people had her winning, but um, nobody can deny that it was a very, very close fight, and that's that's why uh, the rematch is happening again. Um, so, yeah, I'm just looking forward to clearing any doubts, I guess, on Saturday night. Beyond uh, fighting a more disciplined fight, was there anything, any, any other things that you're going to do, without giving away your game plan, of course, that you'll do differently or, or how you're approaching this fight differently than the first fight? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I don't really, I just want to go in and produce a, a performance I know I, I'm capable, capable of, but I suppose. Um, I obviously won the first fight, but I was disappointed with my performance, and um, and people are still yet, yet to see the best in me, so I'm looking forward to, to producing a career best performance on Saturday night. Thank you, Katie. I just have a question for Eddie, if he's still there. Yeah, I'm here. Eddie, what, what are your thoughts? Obviously, uh, Brakus losing takes that fight away for the time being anyway. Uh, what were your thoughts on, on her losing to McCaskill? I thought it was a very tight fight. You know, I think it depends what you liked. I thought the crisper punching, um, you know, came from Brackhouse in that fight. But as always, the work rate came from Jessica McCaskill. She's absolutely relentless. And I think, you know, um, you could definitely argue she deserved the victory. So it was a big shock. Um, I think to the wider audience, I think to people in boxing that know both fighters, you know, Cecilia was the favourite, but Jessica was certainly not out of the race there. And, you know, there may end up being a rematch for that fight in November, December. Um, you know, there's so much on the line for Katie on Saturday. We, as a team, we haven't talked too much about what's next. The focus is on winning on Saturday and, and making sure she remains the undisputed champion because you saw last Saturday, everybody talking about Brackhouse against Taylor. And all of a sudden, the wheels came off, you know. So it's very important to stay focused on, on the task at hand this weekend. Eddie, I don't know if you've had a chance to speak to Cecilia or anyone from her team, but she sort of seemed like she didn't say she was retiring, but she sort of seemed like she might be leaning that way. Do you expect her to fight again? Yeah, I think it's, it's very raw at the moment, isn't it? You know, I think people can say things after. Um, it certainly sounded like it could be a potential retirement speech, but, you know, some of the conversations with Tom Loeffler make me think she may fancy the rematch for that fight. So it's early days, but, you know, I'm guessing we'll catch up with her this week and obviously respect any decision and support her 100%, whatever she decides to do. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, Terrell, you had a question for Eddie as well, correct? Yes. Um, Eddie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Um, 
important question. So speaking for myself, I'm just getting back into the loop with boxing. So I'm out, I'm, you know, just catching up with the news and everything. So can you tell us exactly what, you know, of course, the best way you can, what happened with the Serrano fight and if it can be revisited in the future? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you exactly what happened. So, you know, it was always a stress to try and get this fight over the line. Katie Taylor had wanted this fight for a long, long time. And there was always things that we had to do and promise to get this fight delivered. First of all, it was to give Amanda Serrano a vacant world title shot, another one at Madison Square Garden. She won that fight by a knockout in the first round. Then we had to give her the Heather Hardy fight after that at Madison Square Garden. She won that fight. And then we were due to make the fight uh, again for May. And she said, oh, first of all, I need another warm-up fight. So we got that warm-up fight uh, in Miami. That was an eight-round fight. Uh, we also paid her in advance on her money to fight Katie Taylor. And still, she decided not to take that fight. There was a conversation between myself and Lou DiBella, um, you know, saying, do I think she'd take less money for this fight? He quickly told me, absolutely not. We remained uh, in line with the contract. We offered her her full purse. We gave her a new date. And she decided to try and go on a reality TV show instead, which we quick, quickly had to you know, act on as well. So it was hugely disappointing, not just because we didn't get this chance to see uh, Serrano against Taylor, but because of all the things we had to do to get her the fight in the first place. I felt a little bit conned, if you like, um, you know, by, by giving her all these fights and these warm-up fights and these advances and stuff like that. So very disappointing, but I'm just so happy we have a fight that has much more attention in Taylor Pursuit too, because we've seen what, what happened in the first fight. So they deserve a huge amount of credit. And we'll see what Amanda does in the future. You know, right now, I think the way I feel, I think probably Katie feels the same way, is that we feel that, you know, that we've wasted so much time on that fight over the years. We just want to focus on the fights that are possible and the fights that don't disrupt Katie Taylor's career. All right, thank you. Uh, Gavin, you have a question for Katie. Yeah, cheers. Apologies, Katie, you haven't gotten rid of me yet. But, uh, hopefully you'll be wrapped up soon. <laughs> um, I know, like, it, ahead of the, the last fight with Pursuit, there was an undisputed title fight. So certainly in Ireland, the uh, temptation, I think, among boxing fans or even sports fans and probably media as well was to compare it to 2012 and your Olympic final. Like, kind of the questions you were getting were like, you know, where does it equate to it? And is it as big and so on? Is it? significant and apologies that I'm kind of doing it again in a way but just put in the context of, I guess of this being a rematch and the fact that the first fight was so close like it seems as though for a few years people were talking about the you know there wasn't kind of enough jeopardy in your fights that you were winning quite easily and suddenly you're going into a fight where if you were to lose which is something I'm sure you're not contemplating so many people in the world of boxing are going to be like yeah she wasn't what she was made out to be she probably lost the first fight as well for soon as just better like, do you feel the kind of added jeopardy to this one? Um, there's kind of a legacy on the line here without meaning to put you under too much pressure. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, 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 um, I go into every fight uh, knowing uh, that there's a lot to lose, I guess, and um, I want to um, secure my legacy and I, I want to be the best of all time. And these are the, these are the kind of fights that are going to... Um, they're, they're going to secure my spot as the best of all time. So these are the fights that, that I was born for. These are the fights that I, that I absolutely want. And um, the first fight was very, very close. And obviously the second fight, I hope to, to clear any doubts and to, to uh, win a lot more convincingly. And this is what I've, I've trained for really since that fight, since the first fight happened. And I've been uh, in Connecticut training for a huge fight since January. So I feel more than ready for this. And... Um, as I said, these are the kind of fights that I absolutely want and these are the kind of fights that I love. When you win a fight like this, particularly in June when it was so close and probably even going back to that Archer fight in 2012 as well, how much of it is about actually kind of enjoying it and, or how much of it is, is relief? Because like you've, you've built it up so much in, in your own head, obviously, in preparation for it. Is it, is it kind of a sense of relief to have gotten over the line or, or can you actually enjoy the moment? Yeah, I think it's uh, probably a bit of both, really. Um, it's relief and joy when you win a huge fight like this. Um, I can't say that. Um, I mean, the, the fight week is always um, a very busy week with, with interviews and press conferences and stuff like that. Um, but the, the thing that I look forward to most is the actual fight itself. And um, I've, as I said, I've been training for, for months for, for a huge fight. And I just can't wait to step in there and, and, and reduce, as I said, a career best performance.
Uh, well, and I mean it, this time it'll be the last one for me. But um, the, the fact that you had several rematches in your amateur career, I mean, you would have fought some opponents probably seven, eight times uh, by the end of it, and, and high caliber opponents at that. Whereas with Pursuit, she had a, a rematch or two earlier in her professional career, but doesn't have that amateur background. Do you think that actually might be an advantage for you in the, in the sense that? In uh, previously in your career, you would have had to adapt based on having fought someone previously. Like you would have had the kind of insight of having fought them and then tried to apply um, a couple of amendments to make it a little bit easier. Where she hasn't quite had that opportunity to do so properly as much as in her career. Yeah, I think it's always um, good for each fighter. That we, we've all, obviously all, already experienced each other's style in the ring, and um, like you said, you can adapt and you can adjust and. I am very, very used to that, as I said, but I guess it can be an, uh, an advantage for, for both of us, really. We, we have seen each other already. We went 10 rounds together in a, in a war in, uh, last year, so we have seen a lot of each other, and, um, and I'm sure we, we, both, we both made adjustments uh, for this rematch. So, um, But yeah, I, I'm, I, that, that's what boxing is all about. And as I said before, you have two fighters who are uh, who, who really believe that they're going to win this fight? That's what's. That's why um, this is going to be such a fantastic fight. Thanks, Katie. Best of luck. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and this is just a, a last call. If anyone has any questions, please raise your hand or uh, or message me directly. If you don't have that option, uh, I'll throw to Andy now for a question. Hi, Katie. Um, obviously, going into Hi. the fight with Delphine this time round, what do you expect from her? What do you think she will? bring do you expect it to be a similar style to the first fight do you think she will look to adapt and change to how you guys previously fought um i'd say you're probably going to see it probably a similar style to what we've seen before um she's very rugged and uh, very uh, aggressive and relentless and and um, that's what i expect on saturday night it's going to be um a very very high paced fight i think and um but as i said i'm ready and prepared for that kind of fight so you've been in camp for a while now. You've originally preparing for Amanda before all of that happened, and now Delphine stepped in. Delphine, I don't really know what her backstory is, whether she was training or not, preparing for a fight. But do you feel that you do have that extra advantage with you know a bit more preparation time to get ready for this fight? And do you think that will cut pay dividends come this Saturday? Um, well, I don't think. I, I think she, um, as a professional boxer, you should be in the gym all the time anyway, where we are. This is my. This is uh, what we do, and um, and she had plenty of time herself. I think she had seven weeks uh, in preparation for this fight. So, well, when she got the call, so we're both going to fight one hundred percent prepared on Saturday night. So, um, yeah, made the best boxer win. Thanks, Kay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>